Hello friends, in this video we are going to understand about evolution of silum. Evolution of silum. Introduction. The silum is the main body cavity in most animals which is located inside the body and surrounds by the mesoderm on all its surfaces. Development. The formation of silum begins at the gastrulation stage during embryonic development. The digestive tract of the embryo develops as a blind sac called as archenteron. Schizocele In protosomes, the xylem is formed by a process known as schizocele. The archenteron initially forms and the mesoderms splits into two layers. The first attaches to the body. The wall or ectoderm forms the parietal layer and the other surrounds the endoderm or elementary kernel forming the lining of the intestine. The space between the parietal layer and visceral layer is known as the coelom or body cavity. Enterocele in deuterostomes, coelom is formed by enterocele. Archentron produces while the mesoderm buds and these mesodermal diverticula are hollowed out to become the coelomic cavity. Hence, deuterostomes are known as enterocelomates. Example of deuterostomes Silomates belong to three major groups. Under caudates, vertebrates, tunicates, and lancets exist. Under echinoderms, starfish, sea urchins, sea cucumbers, and under hemicaudates, acum worms, and graptolites exist. This diagram presents schizocele characteristics of protosomes and enterocele characteristics of deuterostomes. Origin and evolution of coelom. The evolutionary origin of coelom is uncertain. Two principles in the beginning were proposed. A theory which states that the coelom evolved from an acylomate ancestor. Then, interocell theory, which states that coelom evolved from gastric pouches of Niderian ancestors. This is supported by research on flatworms and small worms recently discovered in marine organisms. Later, Clack in 1964 discussed four different theories regarding the origin and evolution of the coelom. Enterocell theory, first proposed by Lancaster in 1877, supported by Lang in 1881, and Sedgwick in 1884. This theory argues that coelom developed from gastric pouch of some Niderians ancestors such as Anthozoans or Scyphozoans. These gastric pouches separated from the main gastric cavity to form the coelomic pouch. This theory proposes that all bilateral animals are basically coelomate and that a coelomate form flatworms are obtained secondary from coelomate ancestors from the loss of the cavity. Interocellus mode of coelom formation in embryogenesis of echinoderms, hemicotids and caudates are the main supporting evidence for this theory. This is the diagram that represents the enterocell theory. Gonosal theory 
it treats the ocellum as a cavity of an expanded gonad and based on its origin common relation between the gonads and ocellomic epithelium berg believed that ocellum originated by enlargement in an arrow state initially and cavitation of gonads after gametes are released a major drawback of this theory is that the origin of ocellum closely connects with the origin of metameric division and therefore it is difficult to do account for unsegmented ocellomates there is no evidence that unsegmented ocellomates have originated from segmented ancestors this theory has no embryological support because cone doesn't arise before ocellum these diagrams represent gonocell theory nephrocell theory proposed by lancaster in 1874 the ocellum originated as an expanded nephridia however the theory was never taken seriously as protonephridia have been described in ocellomates and also excretory organs are absent in ocellomates such as echinoderms schizothel theory according to this theory ocellomates evolved from an ancestral ocellomate flatworms emerging from the parenchymal cells of the mesenchyme some of these cells formed the peritoneum according to this theory the primary and ancestral to the ocellomate body plan the ocellomate plan thus ocellomate flatworms form the basic group in the evolution of bilateral animals the schizocell method of ocellum formation in the embryonic development of annelids and mollusks would be claimed as supporting evidence for this theory however the evolution of the ocellum is not related to gonads or endodermal pouches of lower forms functions of ocellum a ocellum can absorb shock or provide a hydrostatic skeleton it may also support an immune system in the form of ocellomites which can be associated with either ocellum wall or can float freely in it the ocellum allows the muscles to move independently of the body wall these characteristics can be seen in tardigrades derived from the mesoderm lined ocellum ocellomic fluid the fluid inside the ocellum is known as ocellomic fluid it is innervated by mesothelial cilia or contraction of muscles in the wall of the body which themselves belong to the machine significance ocellomic fluid performs several functions it acts as a hydroskeleton it allows free movement and development of internal organs it serves to transport gases nutrients and waste products around the body this allows the storage of sperm and eggs during maturation and it acts as a reservoir for waste